What's up, guys? Uh, welcome back to the podcast and tech channel. Um, so I decided to record like a kind of lengthy podcast where I'm going to talk about who am I, where I come from, what's my background in tech and gaming and all that stuff. Yeah, and uh, I want to kind of take you on a journey that is uh, super the content maker. Also, if you have not followed me on Twitch, on Twitter, on subscribed on YouTube, liked, comment, all that stuff, you should, because that helps me make more content. And if you're here, I think it's because you want more content, right? Well, let's let's just like straight dive into it, and um, hopefully you guys like uh, like this little story. The vodcasts are going to get more um, technical, more gaming after this one. And for this channel, I'll be doing only two videos a week. It's going to be the gaming news weekly that you already know and hopefully love every Thursday. And uh, every Tuesday, I'll try to get a podcast going. Okay? No promises. IRL is tough. There's bills to pay, there's responsibilities to have, there's a little boy running around the house that needs attention, there's a wife that needs attention. So, there you go, already got some nice info on me. But let's go into the super, right? No? I don't know, let's go. So, we're gonna do this like the gaming news weekly cause I got some pictures to show. All right, so, um i was born in the past millennia in the past century like somewhere around 1982 and um computers and consoles were not a thing at that time so this is gonna be a story to to behold i was born here in the freaking uh, capital of portugal lisbon i was born in a place where very little kids were born and because uh, it wasn't public uh, hospital, it was in a military hospital. And here we got like the first little um, tech part. Uh, my mother was a coder for the army uh, back in her days. So um, her computers were even weirder than mine. Like uh, paper card reader computer. So they, yeah, yeah. So she would uh, work with this, with this kind of stuff, like punctured cards, and and the machines were really weird, it's weird stuff like this. Okay, so we did some code back in the day, so we can we can probably trace that as as further down the line as we can about um about how tech grabbed me by the neck and dragged me into its world. So there you go, Lisbon. Lovely place if you haven't visited. Kind of tired of it. <laughs> uh, then I grew up in this lovely place. This is almost heaven on earth. It's a freaking beautiful bay. It's one in the country. Um, there's beaches all around. There's farms all around. There's peace. There's roads to drive. There's so much nature and and freedom to do what you will so uh, i kind of consider myself blessed to have grown here uh and yeah if you don't know this town you probably should get over here spend one two days here just enjoy it do come after may of course and uh until september it's good it's when the weather is nice and hot and you can walk around in shorts, skirts, t-shirts, bare bones, whatever you want to. So geographically, uh, this all happens in the lovely country of Portugal. There we go. I live in the freaking European Union, in the freaking planet Earth. There you go. Yes, I'm an Earthling. So. Uh, at the tender age of like seven, eight, 
Maybe a little bit later. Um, I got introduced to this little guy, a Spectrum 64. Uh, we had to have like a, a little uh, deck player connected to it so we could uh, load code like uh, like it's shown over there. And uh, the keys were really mushy, you know, like they felt weird, like a buzzer. And uh, I can honestly say this was the first platform that I ever coded on. Like I remember, I don't know, I really don't know the age. I remember getting um, a code book, and this computer was uh, was in Lisbon with uh, with my uncle, so I only had access to it like every every now and then on on the weekends. And I remember getting like a code book, and you you could code games into it. It was like harsh work, but it was nice. And then you could record your your command set and uh, make like graphics like eight bit huge pixels and. In a freaking boombox TV that you had to, <laughs> you had to fine tune the channel still. Um, yes, I'm I'm from an early age of color TV in Portugal, so that old. Um, but this was not my first computer. This was just a computer that I had access and where I played some games. Where uh, we actually had some joysticks for it. Yeah, graphics were like this man although though, that's commodore so oh they, they don't have it here they had like a little joystick the joystick was kind of weird joystick oh there we go yeah that's the joystick no I actually had this one yeah i had this one it's kind of nice it was kind of nice not gonna lie give you it give you a nice feeling of gaming and here came the addiction here came the first injection of blood and, and, and code and uh, gaming into it and here is my first wait, that one that one my first personal pc computer i don't know what they call it so i had this one i remember getting this for christmas or for a birthday some some special late like that it was a sinclair zx spectrum 128k it had the integrated tape recorder so I could load games, record games, all from the same. And this was like a more mechanical uh, feel of a keyboard. And uh, I don't, I don't know. It's like thinking back, I've I've spent so many hours behind a freaking keyboard. That's probably why I can, I can like freaking type with my eyes closed or something like that. But no, it's just from a really tender age, I've had a a keyboard that met my ends and ends. This is why we're here. And the ends, that's why I became a freaking software engineer or whatever I'm supposed to be. Uh, then, um, I don't know, because I don't have a perfect memory of it in, in my timeline when, when the next part happened, but I do remember also having one of these bad boys at home, a freaking Atari. We had like two, um, two freaking joysticks and we would play weird games back in the day it was mainly me and my brothers we we would usually go for the multiplayers yeah this this is it this is it we would go for the multiplayers and the tvs were like that and this was at my grandma's house uh we had like uh one card that had multiple games and then we had other cards and I still remember like vividly sitting in my grandparents' house, plugging this into the TV, firing a power outlet, and connecting this bad boy. It had freaking wood, as you guys can see from the picture, and just spending uh, an afternoon with with my brother uh, playing freaking games. So yeah, like video games go way way back, way way back. Uh, but then after the Atari and after the Spectrum 128K, I kind of, uh, school got tougher and I didn't have, I, like my father, I had like Commodore Amiga, but it was more for work or, or at school we had these ones, but a cousin of mine had uh, one of these guys, actually two cousins of mine had one of these guys, each, each had one of these guys. And I think it was like this guy. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
I already had the mouse. I remember this interface. And in, in here, games started to give like a, a more RG, like VGA feeling for it. So closer to RGB. Because I still, I still remember playing CGA games, EGA games, and then VGA games. Like, oh my god, the spectrum, the rainbow of colors finally came and was available. And you could play games with different colors. Because there was no textures there. <laughs> yeah, that old, that old. And you guys can see the tabs are like shrinking. This will not be a long podcast. Don't worry, don't worry. I know that you guys don't like it when I speak too much. But it's called cool. So uh, here, here I didn't, I didn't code for for a long time. Like I probably stopped coding for for a few years until I got to high school, and um, I would mainly just like play games and yes, floppy disks. I still remember installing this bad boy, man. This freaking bad boy. I still remember having like 12 floppy disks or something, installing it, then doing the same for a freaking uh, office or Word, just Word was 12 floppy disks. What the hell? And here it kind of started to pique another interest in, in IT and tech that it was uh, more like systems based, all right? Like uh, OS, uh, learning a lot of DOS commands, uh, learning functionalities and how to configure Windows. And here, uh, just just you guys got to know that this was a time before internet, all right? Yes, there was no internet back in the day. <laughs> uh, so knowledge was was scar scarce, and you had to go to libraries, you had to go to school, you had to know people that would give you articles and stuff like that. You would have to buy freaking magazines. I spent so much money, like my allowance buying tech magazines gaming magazines just to get the uh the scoops on games to get that special code or that uh configuration that would tweak your computer up and i i remember vividly having like six or seven different boot disks and then i learned how to do a freaking boot disk menu on dos that would allow me to take the most advantage and set it up for specific games like for example when doom came out uh you had to like uh preload the graphic drivers with specific memory you had to free all the memory that you could from the cmos or something like that it was like so finely tuned that when windows would start up Windows barely could like windows could not network windows could not connect to the printers so basically just like keyboard mouse graphic drivers game and i had a lot of fun tweaking all those things and uh and there you go it like started to um spawn an interest in me in uh systems and, uh, and like the real stuff behind the freaking computer but inside the hardware um and picking on that we go to my f my first personal computer um I had one before this one, or no, this was probably my first one, then I started to assemble them afterwards. And it was freaking AMD, so I've been an AMD fanboy for ages. Now you guys let me down, before Ryzen of course, I was like FX trapped, but whatever, whatever, it's all good now. Um, and this was my first computer. And um, like my uncles offered me like a full setup, so... It, it had a freaking all right what did it have that a freaking graphic card and a motherboard then i saved up to get a soundboard you had to buy sound separately guys you had to install sound drivers and the soundboard separately on your main board and none of them had fancy colors or pretty labels like today so you would have to actually read the instruction manuals how to install it how to set it up set up like rrqs on the freaking motherboard um again os bio setup so much stuff that i learned now uh, and uh, at that time and then now we're entering like uh pre high school and high school times and um i remember like upgrading my graphic driver i even got a freaking little i don't know what's the name of that like um 
PC light pistol. Like I had like something like, like you know like the arcades. It was something like this. Yeah, something like this. More like that. I don't remember, man. So it had like a, um, a slot that you will plug into your PC and you can actually play like a Virtual Cop. Yeah, I think it was like, like that, like PC, Virtual, Cop, Pistol. Ah, oh, man, I can't find any. But it was it was something like that. It was super fun. Dude. And I remember like this game was, was really starting to push and Doom was starting to push. Castle Wolfenstein those were like as you know the world at least the guys that know that uh I, when i stream on twitch it's mainly a pew pew channel it's a mainly a shooter channel uh fps is first person shooters all, all those kind of games and i can probably trace it back to this time when i really started to have like the little bug for shooters but uh, during summer i would go visit my 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 um my godfather and he also had like a, uh, an amiga and a pc before i had mine and um one of the games i played most was um was this guy man iron man off-roading and damn i like i could not wait for summer to go to their houses and play this game you know like wait for summer kids would want to go to the beach and be done with school no i just wanted to go there and, and play this game you know, oh tga there you go <laughs> man it was just so freaking awesome so freaking awesome the levels the boost the tricked out cheaty ai that would always win in the last lap with infinite nitros even though you could see that he only had limited nitros here but he was like Spam them and not waste them. You know, the the shizzle, the shizzle. So from um, then on, I like I had laptops. I always built my PCs from from uh, besides my first one. I never bought a box PC. No, I don't know. I like to get my hands dirty. I like to to assemble it, know the pieces that are in it. Uh, figure out uh, what it makes it tick and then that's that's very interesting for me so we go to college we go to university where I go for a computer science degree all that stuff so I get a laptop I continue to build PCs I continue to game kind of strike 1.6 we would like we would just like um, <laughs> God damn it uh, like me and my uh, schoolmates some of them you still see in the freaking um, in the freaking streams in the freaking youtube uh the you gaming youtube channel links down below guys don't forget to click them um when we play this i had like a little i think it was a 10m like 10m uh switch network switch it had like eight ports it was something like this not a gigabit of course it was just a megabit you know and we would like uh occupate one of the, uh, the the rooms in our university unplug the computer cables from uh from the walls and plug them all into this freaking switch that i had that i would carry to school every day just to, so we can boot our cds with counter-strike 1.6 and just play we would play like uh four on four five on five stuff like that it was a lot of fun back uh back in those days but change shit Stay, stay in school, kids. Go to classes. Don't be like me. So, I finally... I'm done with university. I start to work. Um, started doing development as a Java developer. Um, some some stuff like that. Some um, workflow designers. Um, weird stuff, weird stuff. Then I kind of got sick of the, the job I had. And I didn't see much future in it. I still don't see. And um, I took I took a, a leap of faith, and I decided to try out working abroad. And this company that everybody loves to hate nowadays uh, gave me an opportunity to work over here. 
in freaking Madrid somewhere over there <laughs> and um, yeah I was there for two years doing uh, LT tech which is a localization testing um, center of EA in Madrid so games got localized and they got to be tested there was always QA in the there was also QA in the building um, this was back in 2009 to 2011 so I was there for two years uh, they actually offered me a permanent position so I could have stayed in EA but I kind of wanted to come back to Portugal because I was living abroad in Madrid for two years and um, it's a big city it's a crazy city there's so much stuff to do and there's so much places to, to visit around so much beautiful places also like uh there manzanares is freaking pretty um so much stuff i actually have like um i have a strong connection to madrid before i actually worked there i still have friends there shout out to the madridistas and um yeah i decided to come back to portugal to lisbon to work uh, where i've been working for a telecommunications company as a as a team lead slash software developer like doing internal tools and that, that stuff Mo much like as i did in a uh, freaking ea as a developer okay so i was mainly doing like back office tools and stuff like that we would have a, a sniff at some game code every now and then but it was very very rare um so i still have a strong connection with ea i have many friends there and I made a lot of friends that are in the gaming world, Blizzard, uh, Respawn, you name it, they're, they're everywhere, Activision. So I still feel a very strong connection to this world. And since I've been making content on YouTube and now on Twitch for, for quite a while, mainly from, from that time, mostly from that time till now, um, my my gaming connection has been stronger than ever and streaming streaming is 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 like a nice hobby streaming here on twitch it's an interesting hobby um but it's challenging it's freaking challenging it's it's not easy it's not easy and uh, you always gotta like pick your game and know what you're doing and being live being constantly talking or, or having content to provide uh like now that i've been playing games like titanfall and uh, apex where you can actually do some crazy maneuvers or, or going back to battlefield getting in a tank and doing some crazy stuff i'm trying like to get my imagination flowing again and uh going for it you know um but it's not easy it's not easy being a, a small I don't want to say a small stream. I want to say like a newcomer on on Twitch. I have, however, been streaming for two years, and uh, I'll probably keep it keep it going for for quite a while. So um, YouTube, uh, YouTube, I still do some stuff on YouTube, as you guys know. So yeah, guys, that's that's it. I try to well here on the podcast channel. I'm gonna be approaching more technical more gaming more specific um or streaming um subjects all right like how to stream how to record to youtube how to set up obs all that fancy smashy stuff and which version to use what plugins i use all that stuff uh we'll also show you like my current setup all all those things are, are upcoming videos for this uh channel on my gaming channel, I will give you some like uh, random live gameplays, uh, some Twitch highlights when uh, when I got the time to compile them, and reviews, old ass reviews, cause okay, money short, so I cannot go after like the the main uh, new games. But I will um, will try to be honest to you guys, cause um, I've always I've always hated being scammed on games you know and and it's a very popular theme nowadays and it's weird it shouldn't be but games are being like uh 
fastly delivered and uh, freshly put out there and then they'll continue to develop and give more content whatever but money is hard to come by right to everybody so i want to with the gaming channel i want to help you guys make a good decision uh i usually do a lot of alphas and beta testings uh some stuff that i cannot share on the channels or on the stream unfortunately because of the ndas uh other stuff i can share there's actually uh some beta videos coming up on my gaming channel again links down below so you know, be be on the lookout for that and um yeah i want to game for you guys i love gaming if you guys love gaming there's only one rule with me it's you gotta have fun and sometimes you'll see me rage but it's not that frequent it's not gonna happen that frequently um but on on my stream and on my youtube channel i've i've like taken a, a twist and i want to have fun i want to be entertained by a game and if i'm in, being entertained by a game that means i can entertain you guys about it so i'm gonna pick up some old games and stuff like that uh some new games i'm gonna try to do some crazy stuff on some games uh, but mainly, I want to have fun playing these games and I want to show you that these games can be fun and uh, we live in a super toxic world nowadays and everybody is the first to point the freaking finger, the first to throw down something, to badmouth something and it's really hard to, to, yes, it has those issues, but look, it also has this, it also is doing good here or it's it's doing better here or they're actually gonna fix that um or just wait don't buy now never pre-order never freaking pre-order make them earn your cash all right don't throw your cash away make them like really put the product out there and uh finish it before you give them their cash um and microtransactions everywhere but i'm rambling now uh i just i just have fun gaming i've been gaming for i don't know 30 years 27 26 too many years i've seen computers come up i've seen consoles come up i've seen so many games i've played so many games uh, my steam list is friggin huge it's way more than i'll ever play there's games that I know that I will never touch. Um, but hey, hopefully you guys enjoy this. Hopefully you guys want to take this trip with me. And uh, if you do, subscribe, like, leave a comment down below. Check out the gaming channel. Um, if you guys like motorbikes, I also have like a motorbiking channel. Again, links down below. That one is kind of quiet. I'll bring it back sometime this summer um if you prefer to interact directly with me you can do so on twitch from thursdays to sundays starting at 22 gmt again links down below so go go follow over there and hey as always guys very freaking super hope you enjoy this more pack more podcasts to come also i'll be releasing the first season where it's just audio podcast all on uh all on this channel so don't be alarmed if you if you see a lot of videos popping up it's the old the first season of podcasting that i did uh podcast will now have like this uh aspect uh maybe some tech stuff going on like i can show you some stuff you know like from thermal pace or whatever <laughs> so yeah guys be freaking super have fun gaming I'll freaking see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.